As someone who lives in Australia, there's a lot of hobbies we enjoy, like going to the local pubs, or going to the beach when the sun isn't too boiling hot. And another topic we seem to enjoy is sports, from AFL, cricket, and yes, even tennis. I, I, I don't know how anyone can sit through an entire match, it's absolutely boring as hell. But the NRL is a sport I came obsessed with in my teenager days, and while I don't follow the NRL nowadays, I do appreciate it from time to time, especially when you root for your favourite team to get the victory. And look, even the referees are having a go at it as well. As a video gamer, of course I've played the Rugby League games, and since it's been ages since doing a tier list video, I think I'm overdue for a ranking video. So here is a tier list video of the NRL video game series. Now keep in mind when it comes to these sort of videos they're always going to be an opinion based video. So let's try to be friendly down in the comment section and with that being said, let's begin. So you know the drill, we have great, good, average, mediocre and the shit stuff. I've also added a new layer called never played. Anything that gets added on that category, it's basically a game I never played or haven't tried out before. So let's start off with NRL Rugby League, my very first NRL video game and the first time experiencing Rugby League. I first saw this game as I played the Bulldogs vs the Tigers with very little knowledge of what the game is supposed to be. And it wasn't until my early young adulthood that I actually started replaying this game and yeah, it's, it's completely outdated. The commentary is pretty rough, and the gameplay does feel a bit unpolished, but I will say this game does have some nice attention to detail, and it is something I feel most video game sports do lack. But having said that, I will be putting this game in the average section. Not the best game, but also not the worst. Next up is Rugby League 2, and this was definitely a step in the right direction for the series. The graphics to me had improved, the gameplay was better, and I believe this was the first game that introduced Franchise Mode, which allows you to play as a manager for your team, and you can decide who to hire and fire, change your roster up, and plenty more. I really enjoyed this game, and it's going to the good section. And here we have is Rugby League 2 the World Cup Edition. And yeah, it, it is pretty much the same as the last one. With the exception of an updated roster, new stadiums, and being able to play as the Gold Coast Titans was a nice touch at the time. I am going to put this game in the good section as again, it is the same video game, but I am happy they gave an updated feel to the game itself. Next up is Rugby League 3, and oh boy, I put in so much hours into this video game. The amount of times I had to change the battery on my Wii controller was crazy. The graphics were definitely ahead of its time, and it featured some fun game modes. The only negative thing I have about it is it's only exclusive to the Nintendo Wii console. But other than that, I love that game, and it's going to the good section. Next up is Mascot Mania. It was only released on the Nintendo DS, and I would probably go as far to say it's an underrated video game, believe it or not. You play as a mascot of an NRL team, and you go through level by level collecting cards and defeating other mascots. The platforming may not be as good as I remembered, but there is a bit of fun to it if you enjoy the NRL. It's going to the average section. Now next up is Rugby League Challenge for the PlayStation Portable. And, uh, I haven't played this game yet. To be honest, it would be unfair to rank a game that I haven't played before, so for now, it's going to the never played section, but if I end up playing this game in the future, I'll do a quick update. So next up is Rugby League Live. And holy mother of Jesus, this was such a horrible video game. Even playing this game for the first time, I could tell something was really off. Maybe it was the downgraded graphics, or the same gameplay elements we've seen from past games, or maybe there's no franchise mode, which lowers this game's replay value. Whatever the case is, it's not a good game, and I'll be putting this game in a mediocre section. Next up is Rugby League Live 2, and comparing this game to the previous title, it is so much better. What was cool about this game is it featured tattoos for players, and it actually looks really cool. Not only that, but it also introduced career mode, which is basically franchise, and not to mention an updated gameplay. 
And while the game does look a bit outdated, this was a nice change of direction for the series, and it's going to the good section. Here we have is Rugby League Live 3. My sincere apologies, but my memory on this game when I first played it isn't exactly 100% accurate. I replayed this game recently, and I can say that I did end up enjoying this game more than Live 2. They brought in Be A Pro Mode as you play a single player and rise from the under 20s to becoming a legend in the sport. It also had some of the best graphics in the series, and I liked the intro to each team, hyping up the next match. And all that good memories did came flowing back, and I remember having a good time back then, and I had a good time now. This game is going to the good section. And finally, we have Rugby League Live 4. Now, I have done a video on this game years ago, and I can definitely say that video is really outdated. Apparently there were a few bugs that caused people to be annoyed by the game itself, and while I haven't witnessed much of the bugs in that game, I can understand people's frustrations. I did manage to replay this game as well, and while I did enjoy it, but I felt it wasn't as fun as Rugby League Live 3 in my opinion. So Rugby League Live 4 goes to the average section. And with that being said, this concludes the ranking system. Now, by looking at it, the series has a lot of potential to be something great. I think they just need that one extra push in the series to really make it stand out. Which is probably why I think it's best to sell the rights to EA Sports or even 2K Sports. That way, a new NRL game would be released with a more updated feel to it, and even have a story mode, that'll be cool. So overall, while it's nothing spectacular, but if you're an Australian, and or if you love the NRL, then I would definitely pick these games up. But anyways, that's going to wrap up this video. Comment down below on how you would rank those games in the tier list. And with that said, I thank you all so much for watching. Take care, have a great day, and I'll catch you all in the next video.